Okay, in this video, I'm going to talk about conditional probability with Venn diagrams. Now, here's the formula. The probability of event E given F has occurred will equal the probability of E and F occurring divided by the probability of F occurring. So, with conditional probability, we're promised that F has occurred, whatever that event is. So, we will divide by the event that has occurred and not by the total sample space. So, that's what is different about conditional probability versus standard probability where you would divide by the sample space. We're not going to do that with conditional probability. Now with Venn diagrams, we're looking at diagrams with sets. So it's slightly different. It's not really like a word problem or anything like that. So let's take a look at an example and see how that would work. Okay. Now here's an example um, of a Venn diagram. These are three sets, A, B, and C. And in these three sets, we can talk about uh, conditional probability. So our example is, what is the probability of set A given B union C? Okay, so what is A given B or C? If I rewrite that in terms of that formula that I showed, that would be A and B or C divided by the probability of B or C, okay? Well, how can we find this? What is A and B or C, okay? If we want, we could put a little parentheses around that to see that that's what we're talking about, but where is this? Where is A and B or C? Well, this is the part of A that has in common with B or C. So what part of A has in common with B or C? Well, B or C is anything inside these circles. So that is B or C. What part of that has in common with A? That would be this portion right here, okay? So that's the part that we need to add up. So that would be 7% plus 14% plus 8%. And what's that? That's 7 and 14 makes 21, plus 8 makes 29. So that's 29% up top. And then that would also be, of course, as part of um, B or C. And we need to add the part of B or C that has nothing to do with A. And that would be these three, right? Part of B the part of B and C, and then the part of C that we need to add up as well. And so that would be 9, that would be 8, and that would be 9. And so what's that make? That's 29, and then 18. So it looks like that's 55%. So that's going to be 29% over 55%. We can write that as 29 over 55 as a reduced fraction, okay? Or we could um, write it as an approximation of percentage. And 29 over 55, if I plug that in my calculator, that's going to be roughly 53%, okay? So what I hope makes sense is how you can find these sets. That's going to be the most important thing. That is the most important portion of the problem. Everything else was just arithmetic. That's not as important as understanding how to find these sets. So how to combine this with A and B or C, how to break this up into pieces that you can solve, that is the most important thing. And I hope that that's a little bit easier after this video. Okay. Hopefully that helps.